morning. So we don't use this no more for the board? Rich. This is nice, it's not it's not a plugged in, that's all. I'm just saying it wasn't plugged in, that's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking.
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Welcome, Evangel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you come to bless the Lord this morning? Did you come to give God what you owe this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you come to magnify the Lord for what he has done for you and who he has been in your life? Did you come to praise him? Did you come to magnify him? Did you come with Jesus on your mind? Did you come to show forth your appreciation for his goodness? Amen. For his keeping power, for his tender mercies, Hallelujah. for his kindness, for his love, for being God all by himself. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 This is your time. This is the Jesus. worshiper's Hallelujah. time. This is the praises time to magnify the Lord. Yes. So I want you to take this moment to just get your mind on Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to think upon God because you truly can't really praise him without thinking on what he has done. Amen. Amen. So this is a time where we can leave every burden at the feet of the cross. Hallelujah. And give God what is due unto him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Lord. Give Hallelujah. God what Jesus. is due unto him. Hallelujah. 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 Let pride Hallelujah. come out of the way. Say, God, this is what I got to pay you this Lord. morning. Yes. Hallelujah. I owe you the praise. I owe you the glory because you've been better to me than I've been to myself. Amen. That's not even a cliche. It's to learn that God has been better. Hallelujah. He has provided a better way. Glory to God. Apply his blood to my life. Glory to God. Save me. I could have been out there. Glory to God. I could have died in my sins, but Jesus came for me. Glory to God. Jesus rescued me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus provided. Evangel, you should be on your feet already. You're telling me you're not ready to bless God. Hallelujah. This is your time. I can't praise him for you. Hallelujah. I can't magnify him for you. You you have your own experience. You have your own testimony. Hallelujah. You have your own experience. God has been good. God has been good. Glory to God. to you? Yes. Has yes. it been good to you? Hallelujah. 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 We're going to get our minds right this morning. We're going to get our minds right on Jesus this morning. We're going to bless the Lord all my soul. He has gave me feet to stand, hands to lift up, a mouth to proclaim him. Oh, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. It's calmly for us to give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, most high, hallelujah, Jesus. He has been good to me, glory to God. He has been wonderful. It's time to praise him, evangel. Hallelujah, put those hands together. Hallelujah, he says, sacrifice with a sacrifice of praise. That's what the word says, that you are an instrument of praise. Will you lay down your instrument this morning? Or would you give your instrument to God? You are that instrument of praise this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus, we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus, we bless your name. Hallelujah, Jesus, we bless your name. Oh God, we give you glory, hallelujah. Lord, we give you thanks, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, we put our minds on you this morning. Oh, hallelujah to your name. I give you the fruits of my lips. Give him the fruits of your lips. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you this morning. Oh God, I bless you this morning. Oh God, I give you praise this morning. Oh, it's been a trying week, but I owe you praise. Oh God, I owe you glory. God, I owe you honor. God, I owe you everything, Jesus. You're such a wonderful God. Hallelujah, Jesus, a wonderful God. Wonderful God, wonderful Jesus, wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Wonderful God, wonderful God. Wonderful Jesus, hallelujah, wonderful Jesus. Wonderful, you can begin to talk to him. You can talk to him, open your mouth and talk to him. He is your God, he wanna hear something from you. Hallelujah, let it flow from your heart. Hallelujah, right to his ears, glory to God. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. 
Hallelujah, Jesus, you're wonderful. Oh, God, you're wonderful, Jesus, you're wonderful. As we're yet gathering on this morning, not only do we want to allow the presence of the Lord to enter into the room, but we lift up our hands and we open up our mouths for him to enter into our hearts. I'm going to ask that everyone will just lift your hands in the atmosphere. And let's just begin to speak well of our Savior, speak well of our Master. Speak well of our King. Speak well of our Lord. Hallelujah. For he's given us life. He's given us health. He's given us grace and mercy. Time after time, over and over again. And we magnify his holy name. We glorify his holy name. We glorify him. For he's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. He's a worthy God. We celebrate him for being the King of kings and the Lord of lords. The angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. He's a mighty God. Hallelujah. He's the air that we breathe, the song that we sing. Come on, praise him. Let's sing together. One voice. Make it real sweet. Say, this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Everybody lift your voice and say, This is the air I breathe. The holy breath.
testimony on today. He's the bread of life, the sustainer, the keeper of your soul.
on evangel. I know we're still gathering, but we can let the worship fill the room. Come on, open your mouth and sing. Come on, let the breath of life fall on you, the breath of the Lord. I dare you lift your hands and sing it at the same time. Let the Lord touch you. Come on. This is the yeah. end. But I need you to give him the praise and shout. You can give him 
intercessory team amen to just come and we're going to go to go to the lord in prayer on behalf of them is that okay right family right this is the part of our family i just want to we go to the to lord in prayer we ask our intercessory leader to lead us in prayer before we go into the word because we want to make sure that 
the enemy knows that as Elder Dove said, yes, he shot his shot, but we're still here. Amen. We're still here and we're yet still going to praise the Lord and we're still going to lift his name up. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We know when one of our members are sick, we all have to carry the burden. Amen? Amen? So today we're going to stand because we're going to bombard heaven on behalf of them. Each and every one of them that is sick today. And you said we have our sister Ricketts. Our sister Gina. Come on and just lift your voice and begin to praise the Lord. Come on and just open your mouth and begin to praise the Lord. The Bible said when the prices go up, the blessing will begin to come down. So Father, we bless you this morning. Come on and open your mouth. Father, we bless you this morning. Father, we give you glory this morning. Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you because you're our God. We thank you because you're our Savior. We thank you because you are our Redeemer. We thank you this morning because you are the doctors of all doctors. We thank you this morning because you are the supreme beam. We thank you this morning, oh God, that we have a God, that we can call upon God. It doesn't matter what situation we are going through. It doesn't matter what problems we have facing us. It doesn't matter what burdens we are carrying. We have a God that can come to. Father, this morning you said call upon you. And you said you, God, will show us great and mighty things which don't know us. And Father, this morning as we stand in the gap, uh, oh God, on behalf of our sister Ricketts, uh, our sister Gina this morning, Lord God, you know them by name. Uh, you know where they're at. You know their situation. You know their sickness. You know their cares. You know their pain. You know everything about them this morning. And Father, this morning we lift them up to the throne of grace. Hey, I'm all morning. Oh God, intervene on their situation, God. God, you know what's going on in the body. You are the doctors of all doctors. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are the God that healed all diseases, oh God. Father, you once said you was wounded. You was wounded for our transgression. You was bruised for our iniquity. You said the chastisement of your peace are up on us, oh God. And you said, by your stripe, by your stripe, by your stripe, we are already healed. The Father, this morning I decree and I declare healing from the crown of their head. Hey, hey, God, to the sole of their feet this morning. In the name of Jesus, we command right now sickness to begin to line up with the word of God. Because the word of God tells us, He said, You wish that we would be in good health and that our soul prosper, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, this morning, I speak even now. Oh God, go, oh God, with your healing hands, oh God, wherever they are, oh God, whether in the home, whether in the hospital, oh God, where they are, oh God, God, we know that prayer is no distance away. Father, we plead the blood this morning. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood over their bodies, oh God, the blood over their mind, oh God, the blood over their secretary system, the blood over their respiratory system. The blood of every situation this morning. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood this morning. The blood, the blood, the blood. Oh, God, everyone that is in this building. Lord God, that is sick in their body. Come on and reach to where the sickness is. Reach to where the pain is. Oh, the blood, the blood, the blood. The blood of every sickness. The blood of every heart problem. Every lungs problem. Every kidney problem. Jesus. 
children, let me tell you that I'm the first one to tell you that. That it is, uh, tell your neighbor, it is for what is to come. And I tell your other neighbor, because we've lost all expectancy. Hallelujah. I want you to listen closely what has happened. What has happened is that we praise God so much and have faith for things now that when it is not his will, that we lose all faith. And we stop praising him. And we can't be motivated to praise him because we're disappointed. That God, you didn't show up when I needed you. That God is saying your hope is misplaced. Your expectancy is to be for things to come. That is the word that I have for this church. Look at your neighbor and say three hopes. didn't say it like I thought you would say it. And you need to turn to somebody else and say three hopes. For those of you visiting us online, welcome to Evangel Temple Ministry. Our arms are open to receive on today and if you are without hope let me tell you that this is the place that we can direct you to find hope in Jesus Christ uh, there was a songwriter if you remain on your seats on your, on your feet there was a songwriter named uh, uh, Ed Moat in the 1800s, he was a carpenter. He was a cabinet maker. And he wrote this song. He wasn't a songwriter, but his life had been transformed. And with his life being transformed, he wrote this song on the way to work. My hope is built. on nothing less than Jesus' blood. And I, see, I'm, I'm, I'm not like most, I'm really into words. And some of you can't take certain words because you know, certain songs because you don't like the song or you don't like the beat. But it's all about what you're saying. And as he went to pray for uh, this lady, some of you know the story uh, that the lady couldn't find a hymnal where was his method to, to sing before he encouraged. And he had the song that he wrote, which was, you know it as the solid rock. And it was the first time he ever sung it to the young lady, to anyone. And it became a massive hit. Here is a cabinet maker that wrote this beautiful song for this lady. And he partnered with, uh, I don't remember his name. I know his first name was William. And all throughout the land, uh, people gravitated to the song. Why? Because they had put their hope in such things that were fluttering. How, how many put your hope in things? You put your hope in the stock market, and the stock market did what? Or you put your hope in people, that people will always let you down, that they're human. In that verse where he says, I will not trust the sweetest frame. You know, some people say, what does frame mean? If you look up the word frame, it means human being. I will not trust in 
blood in flesh, but I rest on him. My saving grace. Somebody needs to lift their hands. And say, oh my God, right there was a time to lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. Look, it doesn't matter what you're going through physically. It doesn't matter what is happening relationally. Let me tell you, once you're anchored in Jesus Christ, oh my God, the winds can blow and the storms can come. You might sway, but your anchor is sure in that solid rock. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and really give the Lord a praise. If you are secure this morning in the rock that is Jesus Christ, lift your hand and give him praise. I say a hallelujah for sure. Hallelujah for sure. Praise the Lord for sure. Come on, give it to me. Praise the Lord for sure. I need a church that knows their hope is in Jesus Christ. And because he lives, there is no aiding of him. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow with a surety. Because he, tell your neighbor, because he Hallelujah. Hallelujah. and things and humans for our success. Our success comes from you. Reveal this truth to our hearts on this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, to those that are watching online, I pray right now that this word of hope that you have given, it reigns true with them in all of their situations and circumstances, that your light of hope would beam through any dark situation. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Clap your hands and say amen. Hallelujah. You can take your seats. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground 
said tell my people about the hope they've lost hope they come in and raise their hands and they don't even know what they're saying hallelujah for At the hope of Jesus Christ is lost among his chief believers we're so consumed with politics and health and finances that you've lost the expectancy what happens when the church loses expectancy and our praise is frivolous and the words don't mean anything? That revive their spirits once again. Because revival is only for this place. Don't you know when we get the there ain't no more revival. You don't got to revive something in heaven. It's only for here. And if I choose to heal, I will heal. But healing is only for here. So there's some things that I want you to know that's in your word. A quarter of the word is prophecy about what is to come. Why doesn't the church talk about what is to come? Why don't we talk about hope? Because all you have to reach for is the hope of what is to come. Hallelujah. And I need you to understand that that hope is bigger than anything I can do right here for you. Somebody say hope. And when you tell others about me, I want you to open your mouth and talk about the hope that is to come. Not give them some false illusion of things being all right here but that one day soon soon and very soon we're going to see the king and when we are in his presence I know what's going on with Israel and Iran and we're on high security alert and the cops are coming around and all of that stuff. But you know, what is happening here on this earth, let me tell you, I say it every week for the last couple of weeks, Christ is soon to return. I know you've heard it in every generation. Let me tell you something. If your heart is not right, get your heart right. If you need encouragement, brothers and sisters, encourage your brothers and sisters in the Lord because the Lord is soon to come. If the Lord takes me and you remain, remember these words, that the Lord is soon to come. My only purpose 
for standing up in front of you that the Lord is soon to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, if you take your word, your word is is the only truth that's in front of you. Hallelujah for the word. Do you have your word on today? It might be in electronic form or what, whatever form. If you have the word, just say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because in this word are mysteries that's revealed to us. It's not revealed to everyone. And stop getting so upset when you talk to somebody and they don't understand. They don't understand because the truth has been blocked from them. But to you, I give you the mysteries that's hidden in here. All right, take advantage of the mysteries. God doesn't open it up to everyone. Stop thinking that everyone understands this word. They don't. That's why he also spoke in parables. Yeah, they got the simple meaning, but they all didn't get the heavenly meaning. Look in your Bibles, and I'm only going to deal with this one verse because if I deal with the verses of the whole, the whole bunch in Romans 8 and 18, I'll be, I'll be too long. And y'all know I can be long. <laughs> Romans 8 and 18. And I'm on assignment this morning to find a way to talk about hope. And in Romans 8 and 18, it says, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Y'all didn't hear, so I'm going to read it again. Uh, those of you at home, Romans 8, the 18th verse. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in who? Look at your neighbor and say the glory shall be revealed in you. Uh, tell your other neighbor, are you safe? Because if you're not saved, this verse don't apply to you. But if you're saved, yeah, tell them it shall be revealed in you. Yeah, you're full of hope. Hallelujah, somebody. I don't care what you're praying for now. You're full of hope. And it shall be revealed in you. I want to talk to you this morning on the three hopes. Three hopes. Hallelujah. Uh, thank you, Elder. I appreciate you. I am so grateful that my hope is not uh, dependent 
upon my circumstances uh, that I don't have to wait, hallelujah, Sophie, until things get better to shout. I can shout now. I don't got to wait to get healed to shout. Evangelists, I can shout right now. You know why? Because my hope is not built on things getting better. It's hope that is built on the expectation of what will happen upon his coming back. Now, I know that we use words loosely, and I say his coming back, but when the rapture happens, uh, I think I told you this in Bible study. Hey, I'm caught up to meet him in the sky. He ain't coming to the earth. And so, uh, technically speaking, that is not Jesus coming back. There is another time when Jesus is coming back. Uh, being caught up to meet him is not when Jesus is coming back. So uh, sometimes we talk about him coming back and confuse it with us being caught up. But let me tell you, I'm going to be caught up to meet him and changed. I'm going to put on my white robe and go before the judgment seat of Christ. And everything that doesn't belong is going to be burnt up in the fire. Because when I attend the wedding feast of the Lamb, it got to be dressed right. You don't go to a wedding. Some of y'all... Y'all invited to a wedding and you spend so many weeks. Oh, what are you going to wear? What do you, I know men don't have that problem, but, but females got to go through a whole litany of what they're going to wear. Don't think that that is just you thinking. Yeah, that's a spiritual point. Because God is going to kick out everybody who ain't wearing what they're supposed to wear. Well, you say, how did they get up there in the first place? Well, we, we got some things that are attached to us that's going to have to go through the fire. And when we come out of the fire, the things that will remain is the things that's pure gold. But somebody wrote a song and said, I'm going to put on my robe and tell the story how I made it over. Uh, let me tell you, everybody that is at that wedding reception is going to be wearing fine linen. Why? Because we are the bride of the uh, the bride, and he is the groom. And when we go for that great marriage feast, we will be adorned in fine linen, fine white linen. You can't get no blue, and Sister Green, you can't get a green one. You got to wear white. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the white represents the righteousness of the Lord. It is time to start putting our focus on the things that matter and not on the earth for things that don't matter. We have built ministries on things that don't matter. Protocols on things you can't even find in Scripture. Man has made it up and has called it salvation in the Word. And you can't find none of it in the Word. It is different doctrines of different churches. What we ought to do, what we ought not, it's not even in Scripture. I'm here to bring you back to the word, to the truth. And in that truth is an expectancy of what is to come. It doesn't have our focus on the world for now. It has our focus on what is to come. That's why Paul said, I run a race looking for that end. At that end, it, if you notice, it has nothing to do with the, what's around him while he's running. He's just looking to get to the finish line. Hallelujah. How many of you want to get to the finish line this morning? Hallelujah. 
And so, I want to first say to you that there are three hopes. And the first hope that I want to look at is no hope. I think last, no, and O, hope. Uh, you can write it any way that you want. No hope, N O, or K N O W. Yeah, uh, speak, Holy Ghost. When I look at a world today, that the Spirit of God told me to tell you to talk about hope. And he told me to tell you to talk about, he told me to, uh, to talk about hope because what's happening is our churches are not filled with people with no hope. Uh, people that are filled with despair. You don't have to raise your hand because I know you don't want to identify yourselves. But a suicidal spirit has taken over the people of God that is supposed to know hope. But because they do not know hope, they have fell into the cycle of depression and despair and wondering what will happen to them, failing to see what God's word has said or what revelations uh, the 19th chapter has said about the things that are to come. Now, I know uh, that we live in a society that does not read the word of God. You don't have to say amen, I know it. This society, unlike any other before, does not even have kids or adults that go to Sunday school. The very basic principles they do not understand or have not even heard of because they no longer attend a forum that gives them that instruction of hope. So now we're starting from a place of nothing. They've never been inside of a church and never heard the teachings of Christ, which means that the way that we witness and the way that we present ourselves has to be reimagined uh, for we are preaching to a society that has never heard anything about God. As I said before, uh, before this week, I've said that I've had the opportunity to witness uh, people sitting in the courtroom without any hope not even caring what the judge is about to uh, render in his conclusion for their cases because they had no hope to live. They had just uh, really accepted the fact that the worst is about to happen regarding them. Well, I'm here to let you know and to those that are incarcerated, if you're able to see this online, that Jesus cares for your soul. And he is concerned about you this morning. And there is nothing greater that the enemy wants for you than for you to believe that there is no hope. But I'm here as a messenger of the almighty God to let you know this morning that we are excited because we have a hope in the one who lives 
that rose again. Our hope number one is not of this world. Number one, our hope is not of this world. The character of our God is the only safe place to let our hope rest because he will never change and because he will never leave us. As it says in Hebrews, the 13th chapter and the 5th verse, and because he is strong enough uh, to keep us forever in his love. Romans 8, if you move down further to the 35th through the 39th verse, uh, that we have hope for the challenges of today and for the cares of tomorrow. Somebody lift your hand and say hallelujah. But it is important for us to know that number one thing that our hope is not of this world. I'm so glad about that. I have put my trust in people. I have put my trust in things. I have put my trust in systems just like you all and they have all let me down every single time but Jesus love has never let me down. Hallelujah. Clap your hands that your hope is not of this world. And secondly under no hope our hope is not foolish. Our hope is not foolish. How many times do people consider you foolish when you're dancing and praising and your life is just topsy-turvy? When you don't wait until an outcome to shout now, people will call you crazy and delusional. Why are you praising in the midst of? Because the only one that can really praise in the midst of is those that have a hope. I can praise them when uh, uh, loved ones are gone. Why? Because of the hope. I can praise them when the doctor's report is not good. Why? Because of the hope. I can praise them, uh, forget about when pennies are in the bank account. When you got a little dash, you know what a dash means before the number? When the bank account is negative, I can come and get, why are they dancing? They got less than no money. They don't have no money. They got less than no money. Right, but let me tell you something. I got Jesus, and that's all right. Uh, you think that I can't uh, sympathize with you? Everything that you're going through, uh, the Lord lets me go through it also. Uh, physically, uh, 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 physically, and relationally. Uh, I'm so happy that the Lord gave me a wife that... Uh, she'll be broke with me. We'll both be on the street with cups. We'll be begging together. He, he didn't give me a woman that, that you lost your job and she's out. The next thing I turn around and the closet is cleaned out and everything. No, no she'll, she'll be checking to make sure my cardboard is clean for for me to sit down with my dirty pants on uh, to beg on the street. Uh, we'll be praising the Lord together. I know uh, some of y'all can't say that, but I can say that. Uh, uh, we'll be sitting there praising the Lord together as broke as we are. 
uh, whether I have a dime or a million dollars, I got somebody that the Lord has given me by my side. I can praise him whether I have or if I don't have. You know why? Because I met her when I didn't have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, my praise is, is, is not foolish or my hope is not, is, 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 is not foolish but it is based in something. Watch this. When our response to an unfortunate situation is God is good, it is to look at the situation with our Jesus eyes. Y'all know what Jesus eyes are? Yeah, there are different pair of spectacles. Uh, some might call them rose-colored glasses. You know what rose-colored glasses are? It's when you see everything rosy. No matter what the situation you say, you know when you say hi to Sister Montague, and she says, God is good. Uh, that's not just a line. That's a belief. Yeah, so many people adapted as a greeting and they lost this meaning but when you know its meaning it means that no matter what I'm going through God is good no matter what I'm facing and I'm not delusional or foolish God is good how many of you can lift your hands no matter what your circumstances some of you got an eviction notice coming tomorrow but you know what God is good and you're getting a report from the doctor tomorrow. And others might say you're foolish, but I tell you, God is good. That they say you're delusional because you say things like God is good when things don't look so good. But if you knew the hope that is to come, if you knew why I'm really happy that one day I'm going to be changed, God is good. What I need you to understand is the hope that is to come and not be wrapped up in what's going on now. This isn't even an introduction to eternity. Do you realize that? What's going on here, the worries here in verse 18 said, it is not even to be compared to the things to come. And those that believe in Jesus Christ, let me tell you, it, your end is so well, you need to shoot those hands up in the air and just say a real praise, Hallelujah! Let your praise be based in your hope. Because for so long, your praise has been a ritual that you don't even know what you're praising him for. Uh, I give the Lord glory and honor for life, health, and strength. I thank him for activity of my limbs. What happens when you don't have your limbs? I thank him for keeping me in my right mind. What happens when age gets you and your mind starts playing tricks on you? Well, I believe that we can praise him no matter what happens. If I start losing some thoughts or if I start losing some limbs, I still say God is good because it's not based on a hope here. It's based on a hope that is to come. Hallelujah. My hallelujah is based on a hope that what is to come. I'm so grateful for it. Clap your hands and say hallelujah. It may seem foolish to the world 
But our view of suffering and hardship in this life is informed by the perfect work of Christ, provided through his death hope and of, of an eternal joy. If you're making notes in your Bible, write down, or on your paper, write down 1 Peter 3 through 9 and Ephesians 1, 15 through 21. First Peter 1, 3 through 9 and Ephesians 1, 15 through 21. Because I don't like to say anything that's not based in the word of God. Our hope is not based on circumstances. It is based on the unchanging nature of our God. As we can see in Hebrews 6, 17 through 18. So that's the third one. Our hope is not based on circumstances. Number four, I want you to know, and I'm rushing through, so if you're writing, just write these quick. I'm talking about hope this morning. The positive thing that I want you to know is that our hope is certain. Our hope is certain. The hope of the believer is not a vain wish for the best outcome. You know when you pray, and you pray hoping. Uh, I don't have to hope, or uh, I shouldn't, don't let me use that word. I don't have to really uh, uh, say, God, well, if you come. But my, my hope in him coming is a certainty. The hope of the believer is not a vain wish for the best outcome. It is a joyful, expectant certainty. I talked to somebody this week. I was encouraging their hearts, and we talked about praying and believing. And their response back to me is, I don't like to pray believing because it gives a false expectancy. And I said, that's not scripture. Scripture tells me that when you pray, that you pray believing. It also lets me know that without faith, it's impossible to please God. And when I start looking at the miracles that God did, it was their faith that made them whole. So I said, when you pray and you don't pray with faith or believing or an expectancy, you're just rambling off at the mouth. The expectancy that we have is of the hope that is to come. Now, you can even sit here as a believer and say, well, if God comes, you know, some people say we're already in heaven. Hey, read your Bible. Stop listening to people and read your Bible. If you read your Bible, uh, then you would know of the events. Now listen, I can tell you that Jesus didn't rapture the church yet because I wouldn't be here talking to you. And the tribulation is not what's going on now. Uh, the tribulation comes after we are caught up. There's seven years. And if you study 
uh, Jewish weddings, you would know that those so seven years are very important. Uh, the number seven is an important number. And that's why after the seven years is when the millennial reign will happen. There's got to be seven years. Three and a half tribulation, three and a half great tribulation. We're not in the great tribulation. Uh, there are signs that let us know that we are in the church age and these are the last days, but we're not in the tribulation. So all the things moving to that point is a certainty of what's about to happen. And I don't know about you, but I have an expectant heart of what the prophets say is going to happen. For 1 Corinthians 1 and 20 says, For all the promises of God, y'all know the verse, is yea and amen. So every promise that he has made, everything that he has said will be yea and amen. I'm here to encourage a heart this morning. In Proverbs 28, surely there is a future and your hope will not be cut off. In Matthew, the ninth chapter, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's Psalm 71. But I will hope continually. You know how we say pray continually? Well, the Bible also tells you to hope continually. There's a bunch of things you got to do continually. But hope is one of them. Some of you are praying without hope. The Bible said, the Lord said, remind the church of my hope. Some of you are flustered about things you shouldn't be flustered about. They shouldn't grip you the way that they're gripping you because there is a hope that he's promised for you. Hallelujah, someone. I know I'm speaking to some heart today. In Psalm 71 and verse 14, but I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. Oh my God, I mean a real praise. I'm not talking about what this thing that we do. We, don't, we do it from our lips and not our heart because we're conditioned. As I said last week with communion, you know what happens to us? Uh, we have man that puts in rituals. Now, we know what the Bible said for us to do, but many of us participate in the rituals because we were brought up in church and we have no idea what it means. Uh, some of you have been taught to lift your hands and say hallelujah because the leader whether it be myself or whether it be Natasha tells you to do so. So you lift your hands in obedience and you say hallelujah. Why are you saying hallelujah? You don't know because you just do what you're told. Let me tell you something. Your actions now are going to shift. And now you are going to believe in your actions and your words. That words can be prophetic. But now you're going to praise him in truth. Because now is the time when the church and the believer is going to go back to the truth. And not just take the words of those that stand up and forth before them. But there is a responsibility in you all to get off the milk and to start eating uh, the meat that the Lord has offered. All of you have his word. All of you have his word. Whether it's in electronic form, the, the app is free. That's the most brilliant thing that they ever, you can't say I can't afford the app. You all got phones, the app is free. 
You can read it in whatever version that makes you happy. But the app is free. So reading the word of God should not be foreign to you. And once you start reading the word of God, this was a conversation Steve and I had this week. I, 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 I had a conversation with a man that was, he was saved for 10 years, but he was not transformed. Let me tell you, there's got to be a transformation. But through that, it was God working in him. And in the, the course of that 10 years, he was coming in church, and I was telling Elder this morning that he, he said he felt so guilty when he came, like everybody could see through him. <laughs> he felt guilty. I'm not living right. And it caused him uh, to switch over to a full commitment to God. He said that before he made that full commitment, listen very closely to me, he would read his word every day. He even had a schedule to go through the Bible in a year, and he would do that year in and year out but he did not get any understanding. He was just reading words. But after 10 years, when he decided to commit himself fully to the Lord, he said he started reading scriptures and they started opening up to him. Why is that? Because the Lord withheld that understanding or that that, uh, that blossoming of his word until the life was totally dedicated to him. Once the life was totally dedicated, now I can trust you with my truths. I can trust you with my truths and my mystery. Don't think God is some dumb character. You're not committing to him and you want him to explain to you all the mysteries? As some of you turn on whoever you will on the TV, and they ain't even committed to God, and they're giving you truths about his mysteries? Oh, get out of here. If you want to know about God and his nature and who he is, his word is right there. And as you commit yourself to him, he will commit his word to you. Somebody that knows what I'm talking about, lift your hand. You will begin to read things and see things that you never saw before. And you will realize the, the reality of the hope that his hope is certain somebody can't help but lift their hands and say, hey, thank you, Lord, for your hope being certain. Your shout will become different. The way that you praise, you don't have to be pumped to praise when you know what the hope is. What I realize is the hope that, that, that some of us has realized the greater majority of the church has not realized the hope. That's why we can't praise them. We're trying to lift them up and pump you to feel what we're, what we're feeling, but you have to realize the hope first. It is an intimate relationship with God. So some of you say, All right, hope, okay. I, I, I get the hope, but no, you ain't realized the hope. When you realize the hope, boy, yeah, yeah, you jump on your feet and you go in your closet or wherever it is you go and you will just cry before the Lord. Because God will not hold back all that. You mean to tell me that God gave his only begotten son? And he's going to hold back? No. 
He wants you to experience all that he has. But he ain't a God that's just going to give it out what they say, all willy-nilly. You can't do what you want to do and then experience this thing. You think God doesn't know when you're not fully committed to him? When you're fully committed to him, my God, that then uh, the fountain of who he is will open up. And as we sat there and we began to go through the work, he said, I studied the scripture for years and I never saw this fact. But after I committed my life, I started seeing this and that, and we couldn't even get off one verse. That's why I know. Now, I'm not disparaging anybody, but if you're just reading the word, uh, God bless you. But when you study the word, you can't even get off a verse for sometimes for a whole week because it begins to open up truths to you. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, clap your hands and say hallelujah. Our hope is life changing. How would your life change if you submitted your worries and cares to your heavenly father? How would it change? Each one of you, I want you to go within yourself and ask yourself the question, how would my life change if my worries and cares were submitted to the Father? Our bishop used to sing a song, not this bishop, the other bishop, that cast all your cares. Cast all your cares, cast all your cares, cast all your cares upon Jesus. Y'all remember that? Yeah, some of y'all don't even know who Bishop is. No. He is truly able, so just to leave them there. Cast all your cares upon him. He used to be in here singing that song all by himself because we were all too late to make it to church. Now he'd be with the microphone all by himself singing. He was just having a good time. I know his kids was that, now I hope these people will make it to church. But whatever you're lined with this afternoon, whatever care you have, that the Lord will meet them if you would let them go. Tell your neighbor, let it go. Give it to God. Very quickly, I want to give the other two hopes. The other hope this hope is no hope. The other hope is false hope. Y'all know what false hope is? Matthew 7, 21 through 27. Natasha. The Lord spoke to me this year through the prophet. And you know what he said? He said, I, this was last year in 23. He said, you're going to learn to trust me this year. I said, within my own mind, I said, Lord, I trust you. I didn't know specifically what he was talking about. But my God. When the Lord tells you that you're going to learn to trust him, watch out. Every person 
that ever said a word to me. God said a word of trusting. God said not to trust them, but to trust me. And he came with a word at the prayer summit for me. He said, I am your avenger. All these words link up together. Because so many times we are looking for man to bail us out of situations. He said, I am your avenger. There's so many people that I had put trust in, they had let me down. You know what that's like. That's like some of you, you might not be able to relate unless it's love, you know? When you've been shafted or you've been, uh, you've been taken advantage of, some of you say, I'm not going to love no more because I've been hurt. Well, that's the, uh, the equal feeling that I felt when I, when I experienced what I was going through. I trusted in this one, trusted in that one, but not trusted them, not trusted God like how I trusted them. In other words, I trusted them like they were sent from God. God said, you trust me. The same faith you put in systems and in people, you put that in me. And let me prove myself to you so that you as my servant will have a testimony. Let me tell you something. You cannot flat-footed stand before the people of God unless God brings you through to talk about the things that you were going to present to them. If you're going to talk about trusting God, then that means that you have to go through trusting God. If you're going to talk about God as a healer and God as this and that, everything that you bear witness to, you're going to have to go through. If you can't go through, then shut your mouth. He will find a servant that is going to go through it to talk about it because everything is for the glory of God. False hope. Those who have false hope are worse off than those that have no hope. You can have no hope and not believe in anything. But you are worse off if you believe in something and then your feelings are, are, is conquered each and every time. False hope is worse than no hope. Many people realize their hope was in vain when troubles arise. False hope like building a house on the sand, relying on religious rituals and having no relationship with Christ. False hope is empty and leads to disappointment. How many of you have been disappointed before? Uh, many of you will not raise your hand out of embarrassment. And my father used to say a thing when he would say something based on the importance of living life. He would look at me square in the eye and say, keep on living. If you haven't experienced false hope yet, then keep on living. Some of you put your hope in your boss until you lose that job. Of nothing that you did, it might just be the economy. But when you lose your job and you have four degrees on your wall, what do you do? Who do you call on? You put your hope based on a piece of paper that you hang on your wall. 
So now you got four degrees and can't get a job. Boy, you better call on Jesus. I would give the testimony that my brother gave. I'm so glad that he gave it, but let me tell you, uh, for a year or longer, he was in a very depressed state because he had the qualifications according to society to have the proper uh, job for what he wanted to obtain. But everybody would either say, you're too qualified or you're not qualified enough. He didn't know that Jesus had a plan altogether. False hope. And the last one, as I hasten to my class, my close is the true hope. You have no hope, you have false hope, and you have true hope. True hope you'll find in Titus, the second chapter and the 13th verse. True hope can only be found in Jesus Christ. True hope can only be found in Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. As a pastor, I can give you some other verses, but let me say this as I hasten to close. Uh, I get a lot of emails about all different systems. Oh, bring your church membership up to 300 and do this and do that. And I get all these different systems. Y'all know, Sophie and, and Steve know what I'm talking about. Oh my God, I've been pastor seven years. I must have thousands of emails of different systems. And I'm not saying that any of the systems are wrong or bad. What I'm saying is that the systems that that is presented to me, none of them give the system of just going down in prayer and praying for direction from the Lord. What happens if I take on one of the systems and it doesn't work? And I put all of my hope in them working. As some of you have different problems. You have physical problems. And you put all of your hope in CVS and Walgreens, wherever you get the, 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 the medicine from. I'm not saying medicine is bad. I, but you better take your pills. For the Lord has given uh, some people wisdom with the pills. But I'm saying that you better put your hope in Christ and get direction from him. Let me tell you something. We're sicker than what we need to be. I'm going to say that again. We are sicker than what we need to be. As this week, I went to the doctor, and uh, I got a good report. Uh, so I'm so happy. Hallelujah. But the doctor said something that, that made me think, and I think I mentioned it to my wife. He had said, you're doing great with your, with your weight loss, and hey, we can take you off of some of these pills because the pills is not doing as much for you as what the weight loss is doing. As some of us sit and pray, and we don't do nothing. And a lot of our problems is for what we're taking in, what we're putting in our mouth. It's manifesting itself in all different problems. And so while you're praying, there is a responsibility on you to walk better. You can't eat what you want to eat and then complain about, oh, I got this and I got that. And you're not, the, I'm praying, but I'm not doing anything about that. I believe that miracles occur 
when everything in the natural has been done because a miracle is a supernatural. But if you're not doing everything that you're supposed to do, then what are you praying for? Hey, you pray when you've done all that you can do and you need then the Lord to step in because now you need supernatural and if that's when the Lord will step in and do a miracle. Is the Lord doing miracles? when That's like somebody who doesn't work and is able to work is saying, God, bless me with money. Why is the Lord going to bless you with money? Because you're lazy? That ain't scripture. And that ain't how the Lord works. When the hope that has been given to you should give you an expectation of the future that you're depressed because you haven't looked at the hope. Saints, I implore you to move toward the hope because God put it there in front of us for a reason. The things we're worrying about is not things that we ought to be worried about. When I was young, we sang the song, he's got the whole world in his hand. Now we don't even believe that. We sing it, but we don't believe it. What has happened to us? The Lord said, remind his church of the eternal hope. Stand to your feet. I can talk all fancy theological terms and stuff to you, but if you don't believe in the hope, it don't mean nothing. I realize that we excite ourselves and get happy with ourselves and we don't have the most basic thing, which is hope. Remind my people of hope. And for those of you visiting with us online, in your living room, on your job, in your car, wherever you are, I want to encourage you of the hope that is of Jesus Christ returning, that no matter what is going on in your life, lift your hands and say, I have a hope. Oh, I got a hope. Hallelujah. The Lord said in John 14 that I go to prepare a place for you. If I didn't go to prepare that place, he, he says, I would not have told you so. But I told you so, and so you can have a hope that I'm preparing. I'm preparing a place. Isn't that going to be a beautiful place? He's been preparing for a long time. Oh, my God. He said, in my father's house are many mansions. I, I know what a mansion is. I don't care where you read it, if you read it in the Greek or the Aramaic. Uh, the mansions mean many rooms in a house, a big house. And he's gone away to prepare a big old house for you. Oh, if you're not excited about that, I don't know how, how you can be excited. Let me tell you something. God has gone to prepare a house for you, a place for you. If you, you start reading uh, uh, a topic that I want to get to is the marriage feast of the, of the Lamb. But let me tell you, when you start studying about the marriage, you realize all the work that the uh, that the bridegroom does in preparation for the wedding. Let me tell you something. Yeah, Jesus is no slouch. Yeah, Jesus knows how to party. Yeah, you don't have a wedding without a reception. 
Hello, somebody. Has some of you was stiff as a board, but let me tell you, the first miracle Jesus did was boom, he turned the water into wine. At what? At a wedding. If you look all through the Bible, let me tell you, their weddings weren't like our weddings. Their weddings went on for a week. They were partying for a week. A week and longer. Now, Deacon, I don't know about you, but you'd be a little tipsy or something after that week. They didn't have a wedding without wine. Now, I ain't saying that Jesus was a drunk, but I'm saying that they didn't have a party without wine. When I was in my first job, I learned the custom of the French and rearing kids was that they would pour a little bit of wine into a glass of water. They never drank, they never ate their meal without having wine. And that's how they built up a tolerance for it because it was so healthy for them. That was the customs of the day. And that it wasn't pure wine, it was mixed with water, just like the French do today. But don't think Jesus is a slouch. Every time I read about a wedding or the customs thereof, there was a party of dancing and celebration going on. What do we have to look forward to? We have to look forward to a great reception in heaven where there will be singing and there will be dancing and celebration for our bridegroom. And we, as the church, are the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. When the Bible says to husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, I want you to look at it deeper. The church is the bride of Christ. I want you to start studying a little bit more to what is to happen with believers after we're caught up in the air. Hallelujah. If you don't have that hope this morning, bow your heads and close your eyes. If you are without hope this morning, you can be with hope. For the blood that was shed was shed for all of us. Every single one of us. Hallelujah. Even those of you that are online and you're looking now, the blood was shed for you so that you can have hope. Just raise your hand this morning if you want that hope. Or maybe... It has dulled your senses. Maybe through time, the effects has worn off of the hope of Jesus Christ. Even though we just came out of Easter, you don't even realize what a resurrected Christ has done for you. I need to be renewed in this thought process because I had to get intimate with my God. Just raise your hand. Hallelujah. Come to the altar and let me pray for you personally on this morning. And those of you that are online, just put it in the chat box. And if you place it in the chat box, we will have somebody get back to you and to pray with you. Hallelujah. Where we all can have that hope together and encourage each other in the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. This is such a wonderful thing that we be unified in the hope that is Jesus Christ this morning. Hallelujah. My hope is built on nothing less 
than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Watch this. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. If you need prayer this morning, come up to the front and let me pray for you quickly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. excited about this thing and I didn't know why they were getting excited. Well, they were getting excited because Jesus is the hope of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. If the church begins to praise him correctly and not just as some activity that we do or ritual. Understand this, that I never refer to this as religion. Religion is a ritual act. I have an intimate relationship with God. That's not religion. I'm saved by his wonderful grace. I'm not a religious person. Religious is somebody who ritually does this or that. That's not me. I praise him because of what he has done. How many of you are so happy of what he has done? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. How many of you are anxious to meet on that day caught up in the air if God so spares you with life? But if he doesn't spare you with life, let me tell you, you get caught up and you meet him first. The Bible says the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then we that remain will be caught up to meet him in the, I'm so jealous of those that have gone on. That means that Carla will be up there before I get up to meet him. It means that, that Brother Ricketts and, 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 I don't mean to make her emotional, but your hubby, he gets to meet first and we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye we're going to put on our new bodies all the dead in Christ those that were in the boat accident those that fell on the bridge the Bible says from the seas and from the graveyards of all of these years, they will be called and there will be the great resurrection. Uh, if that don't give you chills in your bones, I don't know what will. You've been crying all this time and God said, you don't have to cry no more because there is a such thing as those that are saved. You have a hope that others don't have. I couldn't explain it to you before that you would understand because you were in mourning. But now that I have your attention, 
I want you to know that we don't grieve the same, that we grieve different. We have a different pair of glasses. We have rose-colored glasses on. And those rose-colored glasses that let us see things differently. How do we see things differently? Because we see them through the eyes of a resurrected Savior. Jesus Christ is his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift your hands as you stand up here in the front. Just lift your hands. Tell the Lord thank you before you ask for anything. Tell him thank you. Thank you for your resurrection power. Thank you for taking the sting out of death. Thank you for giving the keys to the only thing that could defeat me is death. But now I am a conqueror over death. There is nothing that can hold me back. For well, you have conquered whatever it is that the devil had over me. Help me to see the hope that you have presented to me. I pray for a revival in the spirit. Revive her spirit. Revive her spirit. Revive her spirit. Revive her spirit. In the name of Jesus. Revive, 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 revive in the name of Jesus, revive, give a new praise in the name of Jesus, a praise that will go Praise that will stand strong. Because what you have given has not been given to all. But it has been given to me, Lord, I thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. I'm so grateful for what you have done. My tears are tears of happiness. Because I'm so grateful for what you have given. Now, Lord, I ask that you seal me. Seal the joy within my heart. As they are determined to serve you. No matter what comes their way. Sickness, relational. the Lord thank you if you believe that you receive if you believe that you receive clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you oh boy you better mean it all the miracles that the Lord did he did because he saw the faith that was active within the individual let the Lord see your faith. Let him see your expectation of the hope that is to come. Hallelujah. God bless you. May God keep you. And I accept you.
my storage is in Alexander, our evangelist Isaac. Who am I missing? Oh, our Eldon Luby. Our Austin Gray. Please stand up. Leah, yeah, April, not March. Uh, uh, Leah, uh, all of you stand. Now stay standing. Uh, wish them all a very happy birthday, please. God bless you with a very productive year. We want to continue praying for um, our brother Elton, who um, his wife Gina, which you should know, our sister Gina Luby had a a very bad allergic reaction. She's been in the ICU uh, since Thursday. Um, hopefully she'll be out this Tuesday, but keep her in the prayers, in your prayers. And the same thing happened with our evangelist Ricketts this morning where she was brought to the hospital because of an adverse reaction to new uh, medicine. Wow. Uh, so let us pray and, and, and keep wow. them in mind this morning. In other way of announcement, on Thursday, April the 18th, uh, from 10 a.m. until 7 a.m. is the viewing uh, of the wake, uh, as you know it, of the body of our Bishop Plummer. At eight o'clock that evening will be the service for the general public. As you know it, the funeral uh, for uh, all of us regular people is that Thursday at eight o'clock. If you need the address, please come and see me and I will give you the address because it won't be at the place that you think it's gonna be. It won't be at the church. But I'll give you the address that was given to me. And uh, if you all can make it, then praise the Lord. Um, uh, Sister Plummer and the kids would, would love the encouragement of seeing you, okay? God bless you this morning. Uh, you to remember as they uh, put the giving slide on the screen. We want you
you to remember uh, to give to this ministry, uh, to bless the Lord for, uh, we bless the Lord for all of you that have given. I see, I see uh, all of the giving that is done during the week, and I'm so grateful that, that the Lord has laid on your heart to give to this ministry, for this ministry could not go on without the giving of you, the saints. And so we thank God for you and what he has laid on your heart. For those of you that have come on this Sunday morning to give, whether it is check or cash, you see the podium in the back that you can get an envelope for and stick it through there. But those of you that give electronically on the board are the various ways to give electronically. And I would implore you to please take it, take your phone out, snap a picture so that you always have it with you. Even when I'm not standing here in front of you, you can go in your photos and you can see the way to give and bless you for what the Lord has put on your heart to give. Amen. Evangelist Isaac. Amen. Good morning, Evangel. How are you? Hey, afternoon. All right, I'm here for two announcements, along with Sister Patrice. Uh, we are here because Evangel Temple and Wor Worship Center International, we're doing a group, I mean, we're doing a community collaboration for a game night. Somebody say game night. Game night. Are we ready for game night? Yeah. All right. So they were excited. We were excited. It's going to be here, right here at Evangel Temple. And that is Friday, April the 26th. Starting at 6 p.m., we got games. I already started upstairs. Uh, we're going to have an arcade room upstairs. We're going to have board games. We're going to do family feud. We're going to have karaoke. We're going to have charade. We're going to have so many things going on. But there's something that, Evangel, you have to do for me and Sister Patrice. We need some people in the building. So we're asking you to invite your friends and family uh, it is all ages. We are, are working on all groups, so you don't worry about your little ones. There'll be something for them to do. If they're a teenager, there'll be something for them to do. If they're 85, there's something for them to do. So everybody will be included, all right? We will be having a little snack. So if you're real hungry, eat before you come, all right? <laughs> it's only a snack, all right? No, I just want to get that. I want nobody to get that twisted. But we need you to register. We need you to register. Uh, outside at the welcome table, they have a flyer that has a QR code that you can sign up. The registration is very important because we prepare, we want to prepare for the number. We don't want to overdo, we, won't do, we don't, don't want to underdo. Amen? So I need your help with that. And also I need one more other thing. I need some volunteers. I need some volunteers to be chaperones to help do the table registration. So if you're willing to do that with me, please see me on the back on today or see Sister Petal. All right? Did I miss anything? All right? Thank you. I got one more announcement and I'm getting out of the way. This is another community one. This is a community we have started. Uh, Ella Sean is not here, but me and Ella Sean has partnered together and we are going to do a financial literacy and a technology workshop and it is for the seniors. Are there any seniors in the house? All right. All right. It's for, you know, those that want to be seniors, they can come too. But it is a way, it's open to the community. If you know anybody that would like to be a part of this, we are kicking this off. Also, right after game night, we will be doing this. So we have the dates, we have the flyers. And if you want any, informa any more information or any details, you can see me or Elder Sean. All right, on the technical part, I need you to bring your own devices. Devices will not be provided. So your iPad, your iPad, I mean your iPad, your mobile devices, they will not be provided. You need to come with that. All right? 
And again, thank you and God bless you. And I look forward to you to participate in these items. God bless you. Praise the Lord. So we're looking to have uh, a fun event, a event of a fellowship. I know uh, our sister Patrice invited some churches. If you know churches, you know this is a great event on game night for them to come out. It's not, it's not a youth event. It's a church event. And so come out and have fun. Amen. Amen. Men that are handy with tools, I need to see you after service. I need you to do something uh, for me. Uh, men that are handy with tools. Uh, Jillian, you have something to say? Come quick. Praise the Lord. I am standing before you. Um, inviting you to our pre-Mother's Day luncheon on May 11th, Saturday, May 11th, from 12 to 3 p.m. Our theme is a mother's crown. We want to crown our mothers. We want to show them our appreciation. It's not just for the women. The husbands could come and bring their wives so they could show appreciation. The price is $25 for adults. Children from 6 to 12, it's $12. Now we need to have the funds before that date. We need to know who is coming in order that we can prepare the right amount of food. So there are people who have tickets. The Sunday school teachers have tickets. Um, I'm going to ask them to stand at this time. Sister Courtney, Sister, Sister Denise, Sister Roberta. And I have tickets. I know for the seniors, they also have tickets. I'm not for the um, Golden Heritage. I'm not sure who has. But Bishop, can you stand? Sister Brooks, can you stand? I know for sure that the, could you stand? I know for sure the two of them have tickets. I'm not sure of the others. But we need to get your names today. We need to get the, the tickets purchased so we could, know, we could provide amply for you. Bring your mother, bring your aunt, anyone who has played a role in your life as a mother, we want to honor them. We want to give them their flowers while they can smell them. A lot of us don't have our mothers, right? So we want to acknowledge, and it's for children also. Bring your children so they could see and they could honor you. Please see us today, give us your names, and if you can today, start paying um, on the tickets. If you are going to write a check, please hear me. The check has to be made out to Evangel Temple, Inc. And it has to stay in the memo pre-Mother's Day luncheon, correct? Yes. So if you are going to give a check, do not make it out to any of us on the team. Make it out to Evangel Temple, Inc. And in the memo, you would put pre-Mother's Day luncheon. Again, we look forward to seeing you, you, and you. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Uh, before Angie comes, Vaughn, are we still on the air? Hey, you just hold up one second. Uh, there is a procedure that I want you all to hear. There is no line against the wall.
Go ahead. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Um, we're here to announce a big announcement. I'm going to announce, um, my first announcement is about the um, uh, Golden Heritage. Really? Oh, that's what I thought. Okay. No, no, it's not there? Mm -mm. Okay, so it must be the women's ministry. Come on, Greeny, let's, let's do this right. Come on. Hint. Oh. Hint? Hint, hint, hint. Okay, okay. It, oh. I got it, I got it, yes, hospitality. <laughs> Later on in the year. Later on. Okay, tell you what, I got this. Oh, I got this. All right. Well, we're Go here ahead. to announce the International Missionary <laughs> Breakfast. It's a cultural thing where um, in the church we have different, um, from different parts of the country, different parts of the world. And so we want to collaborate with all parts. We have the Guyanese, we have Jamaica. the Trinidad, we have the Jamaicans. Yeah. And so we want to come together to learn about each other's culture and to bring it not only um, spiritually, but also physically. Good food is involved. And so on June the 29th, yes, right? June the 29th yeah. at 10 a.m., at Evangel 22710 Merrick Boulevard, we'll be having our international breakfast. The tickets are $25 for adults and $10 for children. That's what it says, right, Greedy? Yes, yes, okay. correct. So the tickets are available, and you should see Elder Francis, yes, um, both Francis, um, Elder Mignot and Elder Rule Francis for tickets. All right. Um, we will be, um, there'll be lots of food, and we ask that you bring your family, your friends, because it is, you have to be here. Yeah. So please. on June 29th, 10 o'clock, please we'll be, be here. here for and our missionary breakfast. Breakfast. And guess what? I have a surprise. Pastor, I'm doing Aki and Saltfish for you. Hey. <laughs> Thank so. you. We hope you all show up, turn up. It's going to be fun. We're going to do a lot of stuff, a lot of food, a lot of everything. So please get your tickets and be there. Amen. We're going to show you some Jamaicans move. Okay. Right. Thank you <laughs> Thank very you. much. Give a hand clap for the Jamaicans. <laughs> How many of you are, are from Jamaica? Oh, wow, it's a lot of you. Hey, put your hands down. How many from Barbados? Just two? Uh, three? Well, next week you got to get some other island people. You, you sent two Jamaicans up here. Actually, there will be. Oh, wonderful. How many are you from? I, 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 I can't say the Caribbean, but uh, Grenada. Uh, you're not from Grenada? You. How many of you are from some place other than the places that I call? All right, Trini. We want to see each one of you represent at this breakfast. Hallelujah, and have a good time. I'm from Jamaica, you know. Uh, Jamaica, Queens, hallelujah. Where? Guyanese, that's South America. How many of you are from South America? All right, hallelujah. Let us all stand to our feet. This church is international. I forgot to say Trinidad. Uh, 
Uh, Sister Gordon, her precious, where are you from? Jamaica. Are uh, you sitting with a trini? Mm. Your sandwich between the trini and the Bayesian. Oh, Haitian. Now, Stephen is from right here in Jamaica. He might be married to a Haitian, but he, I remember when he was born. Huh? Yeah, Brooklyn is still New York. It's still America, and he's not Haitian. Alyssa, where you from? Haiti? You're from your mom? <laughs> you from here? You're a Yankee. Well, I leave you with these words to encourage each other. I'm not uh, Jesse Jackson. But I believe that the words are very important. Keep hope alive. Make it the center point of whatever you do or whatever you're faced with. Keep the hope of Jesus Christ alive. Why don't you just say that to your neighbor? Keep hope alive. And now, so it's not so informal, but I want you to get out from your seats and greet somebody with that saying as you bless them on this week. bless you on today. Be safe in your travels and your comings and your going. Now unto him that